Hi Matt, I hope you enjoy your time in Germany here and I have two small questions for you. So my first question is, what song do you always want to play live but you never did before or you very rarely did before? And my second question is, which song do I play? <laughs> This is amazing! <laughs> The 11th hour. The answer is the 11th hour, Florian. And you got it down. How are you making that sound without any drums? I think he's mastered the art of air drumming, but with sticks, so it's not really air drumming. <laughs> This is my favorite fan video ever. Florian, you get number one. Uh, <laughs> I have seen actually 11th hour, the song that he just air drummed the beginning to. There is a. I don't know, a video that got maybe 500,000 views that someone made and it's called Charlie the Dog. You have to YouTube it. It's this guy, he has a you know, real dog on his lap and in the background he pushes play and there's 11th Hour playing our song <clears throat> and the dog is on this guy's lap and he's holding the paws and he's air drumming along to the song, <laughs> all the parts and there's little effect symbols sort of on 16th notes. Anyway, he has every nuance down. And the dog's like hitting all of the stuff, and then by the end, his face is so he's so aggravated by this, like just let me go. And it's four minutes of just, I don't know. Oh, no. After two minutes, you're like maybe this is kind of not very nice of the dog, but yeah. the first two minutes at least, you're pretty you're you're pretty happy about it. Um, but yeah, in regards to song I wanted to play, I would say probably an older one that we just back then back. You know, a while ago we weren't headlining as much so we weren't able to play as many songs um i would say the song but it's hard uh probably the song crusades mm -hmm. it's the last song on constellations i think and it's a cool song brent wrote the lyrics about his grandfather and the song is just there's a really heavy part in the beginning that i love and the melodies are really pretty it's the last track We never played it because I think it's it's just it was a song that was kind of overlooked and people didn't really care about it as much as the rest of the CD. So, Crusades. Thank you, Florian. <laughs> hey Matt, can you imagine do a tour where you just play very small venues like what you did some years ago? Well, we're do we're currently doing it right now. So we're playing the festivals on the weekends and then the small shows during the week. Um, we will always play small venues in certain parts of certain countries. So in other words, in Germany, we still play the Magnet Club in Berlin, which is 300 capacity. Um, it's just, it just kind of depends what we have going around it. So in other words, on the weekends, we're playing these huge festivals. Mm -hmm. and, and during the week, we need little shows to fill it. <clears throat> I don't know that we'll do an entire tour that is navigated um, towards smaller venues. Mm -hmm. But if August Burns Red is a small band, and and if we were to decline, then yeah, we would be in those small venues. How does it compare for you as a drummer and playing the small shows compared to the the big shows? It's hotter, for yeah. one. <laughs> I had to take an intermission the other night, a break, because I was playing three or four songs in the first stretch, yeah. like without any breaks, <clears throat> and then I took a break for water, played the next four. And I was just, I was soaked, you know, in sweat and, and completely exhausted because there's nowhere for the air to go. Mm -hmm. um, something that I do, first thing I do when I walk in a venue is look for the fire exit, actually, oh, yeah. because my brother is a fire EMT uh -huh. and he's talked to me about, hey, if something goes wrong in the venue, you're probably the last one out because of where you are on the yeah. stage. So you need to know where the exits are and so especially smaller venues yeah. I'm looking for those the uh, those tiny spots yeah. that's all right I think we got another drummer calling in here <laughs> <laughs> what was the most irritating thing that happened to you in a live show like uh, five sticks broke in the whole concert or, or maybe maybe a, a cut in a, in a snare head or something like that Wow I didn't hear the first part, but I heard the horrible nightmares, um, uh, you know, for examples that he gave. So the question is something like, what's the most horrific thing that happened to you during a show? Yeah. 
<laughs> you either broke five drumsticks or you cut through the snare drum head. And those are both sort of awful things. Um, I would say <clears throat> we were playing a show. My Well, I, I guess my first thought in regards to this question is we played a show in... Um, in a in Hawaii actually I'm said Alaska and this is like the second song maybe even the first song it's called Empire <clears throat> I started it with a drum fill you know and I'm playing and 20 or 30 seconds in at the most I, I look up and I see JB and Brent the two guitarists in my band just kind of like it looked like they were somehow distancing themselves from me but i couldn't figure out how because they were standing still seemingly standing still um and then i realized that they were running off of the stage because the stage was collapsing and at that point i almost fell back off of my riser and looked down and there were cinder blocks that were supporting the stage because it wasn't a stage, because it wasn't a venue, because it was just this makeshift sort of put together spot. And, and it was a great show in the end, but um, in the moment I thought I was gonna die or we, we were playing, I don't know, over a sinkhole or something. It was very strange. Finally, when we patched everything back together, we took um, uh, pool tables and we and and we reinforce the stage with the pool tables <laughs> so the pool tables are in place check you know the risers sort of back to where it was check i get up on stage and before i played anything i just jump on the stage and make sure it supports me i'm like all right i guess i could do this i'd say that was the most horrific thing because it's it could have compromised our safety but um, I have broken drum heads and I have broken uh -huh. sticks before too. Uh -huh. <laughs> How big of a catastrophe is that for you? Is it like ah, oh, that sort of thing happens, or does it really annoy you? The drumstick or yeah, the whenever something like that happens. Like yeah, or... not a big deal. Yeah. Um, sticks are supposed to supposed to break uh, with time. That's what people don't really think about. Like yeah. it's just wood, and if they don't break, they're gonna wear out eventually. So it doesn't really bother me. Okay. Yeah. What made you want to start playing double bass? <laughs> Matt Trainer. <laughs> um, double bass. Double bass. Well, I don't know. As a 15 year old kid, I don't know who in the right mind wouldn't want to at least try it because it, it sounds so cool. It sounded so cool at the time, you know? It's like, okay, you can play this beat with your right hand and with your left hand and with your right foot, but there's something about that sound where it's, you know, you at least have to try it. It's a challenge. It's like every, you know, every person that's ever lived uh, wants to be loved uh, and wants to love and wants to feel brave. Okay, those are all innate things in each one of our hearts. Well, 15-year-old boys want to learn how to play. 